This is causality example number one, formally prove whether or not each system is causal. Now in this problem we want to prove whether or not each system is causal. Let's take a look at a general approach for establishing a proof like this. When a system is causal, its system output does not depend on future inputs. Here's a general proof structure that we can use. Let's imagine the same system T is subject to two different inputs, X1 and X2, to produce two different outputs, Y1 and Y2. X1 and X2 are the same up to a certain time and not, and then are different after that. We can picture it like this. Say we have a signal X1 and X2, which are the same from minus infinity up to the time N equals N naught. After that, however, they are allowed to diverge. So we'll picture X1 as being different than X2 beyond N naught. We then apply these two different signals to the same system T to produce outputs Y1 and Y2. Now at time N naught, all of the previous history of the system behavior is encapsulated in this one value. Now if y1 of n0 depends only on inputs at time n0 or less, then we say that the system is causal. So we, we essentially check to see whether or not these two signals are equal, these two output signals. If they are equal, then we say that t is causal. However, suppose the system does in fact make use of this region of x1 and x2 where they are different. Then y1 and y2 at this time and not would not be equal. That means that they are making forward references to areas of x1 and x2 that were different, and that would tell us the system is not causal. All right, let's move on to the detailed solution for our first system. T1 is 5 times x of n minus 10. Here's our proof structure. We have our pair of inputs, pair of outputs. We're looking to see whether or not y1 and y2 at and not are in fact the same. So we need to evaluate both y1 and y2 at n equals n naught. The result of the first input and the second input look like this, and I'm evaluating this at n equals n naught. Now for these to be the same, we need to ensure that the time index expression is always less than or equal to n naught. Well, we know that n naught minus 10 is always less than n naught, therefore we conclude y1 and y2 are the same, and therefore t1 is causal. Here's our second system, T2. This is x of n squared. Same structure as before. Evaluating at n equals n naught. Clearly the time here is always less than or equal to n naught, therefore y1 and y2 are the same, and T2 is also causal. Here we have T3. As before, we pass that through our system and evaluate at n naught. Now we need to find out whether or not the time index expression is always less than or equal to n naught, which it is. Therefore, T3 is also causal. That wraps up this example.